right. Thank you for staying with Daybreak. You're continuing the conversation here. Honorable Edwin Sifuna is still with us. Senator for Nairobi, Honorable Danson Mungatana, Senator for Tana River, and Honorable William Kisang, Senator for Elgeo Marakwet is with us here. Before we went for the break, we were talking about engagement in places where it matters. And the floor of the house, yesterday, there was a quorum H at the Senate. This is some of the sentiments from the senators, including Mungatana himself. Listen. We were not elected as senators to come in Nairobi and uh, cut walk. We were elected to come to this house so as to discharge business. And the two motions that the chair of this committee has requested that we defer the division are critical motions that are speaking to and giving the National Treasury an opportunity to give our counties money. Madam Speaker, in view of this, how would the entire opposition, end to end, including the leader of the majority, leader of the, uh, the leader of the minority, his deputy, the the the, the whip, uh, the deputy whip, how can all of them plus their members be out of the house apart from the distinguished senator of Kisumu, Professor Tom Ojiani? And the distinguished senator, Crystal Asige, how can be the, they be the only ones who are remembering that we were elected to come here so as to represent counties and protect their interests? And there is no greater expression of protecting that interest than giving them money to remain functional. We should consider moving a motion of suspension against the entire minority so that the voters of Kirif, so that the voters of Vihiga, the voters of Nairobi should know that they have elected people who cheat them during rallies, that they are fighting for them when they are actually cut walking here in Nairobi. Madam Speaker, let us make every senator be able to cast a vote because it cannot be that we are denying progress, important government bills, important government motions are not moving because of deliberate political maneuvers that are bringing filibustering and delay, Mr. Speaker, of those things that must be carried out. Mr. Speaker, it's very wrong. We've been advised that some of these things have time limitations. The chairman here worried, uh, made people to work, the chairman of the finance committee made people to work day and night to bring this motion so that we can be within time. He moves the motion and then at the time of voting, people just walk out because people know they are in a delegation. Madam Speaker, let us be fair to all of us and going to the future, we should look at how we can review the voting within this. It should not be delegation voting. We should all vote, Mr. Speaker. Sifuna, did you sabotage the Senate seatings and cut walk like Halwale is saying? You know, when I watched uh, what Halwale was saying, I, I, I was really amused. First of all, I'm not sure that as a Bukusu man, I can pull off an, a cut walk. <laughs> uh, and uh, the, the most uh, cynical thing is that this is the clearest case of hypocrisy from uh, Halwale. Uh, when he was speaking, I don't know if your camera caught it there, his own majority leader, Aaron Cheruyot, was not in that chamber. If you look behind him, the seats on the majority side are actually empty. Halwale is the whip. The work of the whip is to secure votes and numbers in the chamber when there is a critical vote. This is government business. He's the government whip. His job is to ensure that there are numbers on the floor. He's actually admitting himself that he has failed as a whip. Now, the question is, why, why, why are we here? The reason why there was nobody on the minority side is because the minority side has no whip and the minority side has no deputy whip. Because we've been told that there is a <laughs> case in court that we have to wait until the outcome of that case until we have leadership. Our minority leader has pleaded severally with our colleagues, with the speaker, that that situation cannot continue to obtain. That in fact, 
it is wrong for uh, a tribunal to come and inject an entire house, a process that the house is seized with, but they have refused to listen. On this question of the forums with which or where we represent uh, and execute our mandate as elected officials, Trevor, we exercise delegated powers as elected representatives. And I want to refer you to Article 1, that the sovereign power of the people is delegated to the following state organs, including parliament of which I am a member. And it also says that the people may exercise their sovereign power either directly or through their democratically elected representative. As the elected senator of Nairobi, if for any reason I am unable to execute my job on the floor of the house, I have a right, and the people of Nairobi sent me and told me, ukienda ushindwe, kuja kwetu tukusaidie. You, they can exercise this power themselves. And I will give you the classic example. I have been unable as a Nairobi senator to bring reason to bear on the floor of the house that we as a minority cannot be with a leadership that is imposed on us. I have voted to remove and replace my whip, but they have refused to effect that. The only other place I can go is to come on a show like this or to go at, uh, uh, to a rally at Jivanji and invite the people. The second example, I protested. I protested vehemently. I made submissions like the people of Nairobi sent me to do on the floor of the house about the law on the constitution of this uh, panel on IABC. I was drowned out and defeated by the so-called numbers that these people have. One day they tell us they can conduct business without us. Yesterday they are crying that they need us to come back to the floor of the house. Which is which? So I was defeated. I, am, I was unable to bring my wisdom to bear on the constitution of the panel because we were saying that the political parties are the greatest stakeholders in elections anyway. Can we have proper representation of the political parties on the IABC panel? They refused. So what do I do? I go back to the people of Nairobi and tell them this is an, a, a one incident, a incident uh, instant yeah. where I will need you to exercise your sovereignty directly. And they have told me because the minority party, which represents over 63 percent of the population of Kenya has had no input in the constitution of this panel when this panel meets wherever it is they will meet the people will come and exercise their sovereignty directly because as a, rep a representative of theirs I was unable to get them on that table so Trevor what you see in the Senate and this matter has gone on for too long I have said it here that we have allowed the Senate to degenerate into a circus. That in fact we have become uh, people who do not observe our own standing orders. Yesterday I saw something that I've never seen in my life that a speaker, uh, the other day, I think it was Wednesday, that a speaker comes with a, a written admonishment of all senators, Anatusomea Kama Watoto, when we are seated there. And when I rise to speak on it, uh, the majority side will say, oh, Sifuna is questioning uh, a ruling of the speaker. It's ridiculous. How can I sit there? I was elected by 716,000 people in Nairobi to sit and listen and be lectured by somebody who, are, who has finished his two terms as governor. Really? Is that what you sent me to the Senate to do? What we are saying is, well, let's go back, Senator Mungatana, to the camaraderie that was there in the first session of the Senate. Yeah. That yes, our political differences will always be there. Yes. You will not get me to like William Ruto. I will probably not get you to like Raila Odinga or to agree with anything that he says. Mm. But on the things that we can agree on, like here today, we have agreed the energy prices are high. As members of the Energy Committee, we need to do something about it. We have even agreed that the pain point is the thermal pa power production plants. It is the IPPs, the, the, the contracts that we signed, we agree on that. Can we push that agenda forward? But when we come to the House and we realize that people want to use these rules selectively, selectively, yeah. so that it is just about threatening to throw us out of the, the House, Sijui, oh, Sijui, for a, a week. Yesterday, Kalwale is saying you suspend the entire uh, minority side yeah. under which rule, okay. under which law. Okay. <laughs> well, who gives him that power? All right. He's like, there are two issues here. There's the absconding of duties of the senators, which is now defending. <coughs> then there's the issue of <coughs> objection to the IBC selection panel <coughs> on these two issues. <laughs> Thank Does you. the senator from Nairobi has, have a point? Number one is uh, the one on uh, absconding. You know, I joined, uh, I was sworn in on the 19th, and then uh, the first, when the Senate opened on the 14th, I was not around that week. That is the week that uh, the minority side, I think, made some 
read a letter to the speaker that they were going to make some changes on uh, the minority whip and the deputy minority whip. Uh, unfortunately, I think the speaker traveled out of the country from uh, what I got the following week when I was around. He said he was sick. Then, yes, he said he was sick. Oh, he was sick, eh? Mm. Then the following week when I was around, now mm. that is when the deputy speaker was trying to make a ruling, a, a communication. But there was an, in the middle of the communication, there was an uproar. Uh, there was a lot of noise. The house was not like Senate. In fact, I talked, I spoke, and I said, I thought I was running away from National Assembly <laughs> coming, <laughs> coming to Senate, where, you know, these are seasoned people, these are mature people, these are grown-ups. It's only that somehow also in the Senate we have young people like Sifuna. <laughs> <laughs> so it should be in the National Assembly. <laughs> so uh, this thing actually is not a big thing. We have had some conversation, yeah. and we, the leadership, both minority and majority, and the speaker, then the deputy speaker, had a meeting. And we expected these things to be resolved by Tuesday this week, because the tribunal was supposed to have met and uh, ruled on Tuesday. I expected Sivuna to tell us what happened on Tuesday, because when I saw them in the lounge, when we were in the chambers, they were all together listening. I think there was a case that was going on at the tribunal. So I don't know what is the status of the case. Yeah. And uh, because there is still, there is an injunction from political parties the tribunal, I expect that, that the minority will still continue to have the minority whip and the deputy minority whip who is Olegina until that case is completed because we are law abiding. We don't want to go back like what happened last year, where, you know, there was court rulings, people did not, did not pay. So we, you know, this is, a, I believe the speaker and the leadership of Senate want to obey the law. Yeah. What the courts have said okay. and what the political parties uh, have said, because it's, it's like a high court. Okay. So we don't want to break the law. Right. I believe that is why this standoff is still there. Yeah. So, and we expect our colleagues uh, to, 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 okay. to respect okay. until there is a final determination. All right. And then on IEPC, we did a debate and we discussed. Actually, that was a special sitting. And one of the reasons why, one of the contention was Public Service Commission. The minority side wanted to remove the representative from a uh, Public Service Commission. And we debated and we argued and we said, in our country, Public Service Commission is an expert in terms of HR, in mm. terms of interviews. Mm. And we say this is the body that would also, the nominee from this particular body of a Public Service Commission mm. will help when it comes to interview, vetting these people, ensuring we get people with high quality in terms of qualifications. And uh, Public Service Commission, we have over a million civil servants. These are over a million votes. They are families who are voters. Who is going to represent the views okay. if it is not a nominee from Public Service Commission? And we said we can drop the nominee from Law Society of Gaja. Okay. We have, we said from uh, either side, maybe Parliament, the uh, Parliamentary Service Commission, we could get, we could get, if it is four or two, we say one must be a lawyer. Okay. And if we have a lawyer, from a parliamentary service commission, it will take care of legal issues. Okay. Yes. So there were some concessions. All right. Yeah. Or, you know, on, 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 on those two issues. On those two uh, issues. Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 you want to know, you may want to know that uh, I agree with uh, Senator Sifuna on the issue of the principle that a court of law cannot inject the Senate in its proceedings. I, I hold that view, and maybe it's a minority view, because I think the speaker holds a different view. That's why the chair said, there is a court order, let us wait for it. And in my submissions in the House, I said as much. I said a court 
cannot inject parliament in its business. When we finish our business, if the law we passed is bad, if what we did was so bad, then someone can go to the constitutional court and yeah. say that law is bad and it will be struck out. But when we are doing that law, it is our space. And I truly believe that uh, uh, the Senate cannot be injected. So as far as I'm concerned, we are not breaking the law if we ignore the tribunal's order. That's my take. Okay. And I said that much in the, state, in the House, in the Senate, and I still believe it. And anywhere, I will defend it because we have authorities on that side of, of the argument. Although they can also cite other authorities on the other side. For, but for me, you know, in law, you take a side. And for me, I believe it's the, the chamber is a sacred place. That's the place where I was taken by the people of Tana River. One person, you know, out of all the people to come and say their things. You know, 47 people out of all the 54 million Kenyans to say that you can't, as a court sitting there, you inject them. You say, no, no, you can't say what you, what you, are, you are supposed to be saying. That is playing with power. And you are coming to our area yeah. when you are supposed to be in that area of interpretation of the law. Because that's where judiciary is. Interpret the law. You don't inject us. You don't inject us. It's just like you can't take the president to court when he's executing. Correct. So the, 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 the separation of powers must be respected. Okay. So for me, I, I hold that view. So where I sit, where I sit, I think that that problem should have been resolved without any issues if we had ignored the court order, not even ignored, if we had not accepted yeah. the court order. So, but... While I agree with the uh, Honorable Senator uh, Sifuna, he must also agree with me that they are wrong. They, it is just wrong to walk out of parliament when we are supposed to be voting, you know, to, to be voting on the budget policy statement, which has a timeline. We are supposed to be voting on the debt management policy, the midterm debt management policy that we passed, which has a timeline. We are supposed to vote on my bill. There, there's a bill on the Powers and Privileges Act, which uh, I brought. It went through the second reading, and very many senators supported it because we were, we were expanding the powers uh, of the Senate to, to, to execute the mandate you are given by the people. So we are supposed to vote on it. It's wrong for them to, to work out. I, irrespective of our political issues and whatever, it is just wrong. So he must agree with me that that is wrong. He must also agree with me that it's, it, when we come there, the minority will have their say, the minor, majority will have their way. That is the rule of democracy. It is not right to say every time I lose a motion, in, uh, in, uh, in the Senate, I should go back to the people of Tana River and say, oh, you know, you are the sovereign power, so let us, uh, you know, wah, 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 wah. It's not right, because how many times then shall we go in these five years? For me, I think that is a, a, a position, it's, it should be a structured way to make your opposition views known. Not to go and bring people who, who should be earning their living. Okay. and bring them out of their of their of their day to day activities into your politics i think it is unfair it's really unfair for from where i sit okay. now on the iebc issue i submitted in the house and i still say here uh, trevor that uh, if we fix the systems yeah. properly you know that you know we are looking at this is uh, uh, iebc we have confidence, me, I have confidence that if I lost my election, the systems are so good that I will accept it. Yeah. That even if my brother was seated there, not even my brother, even if my wife was seated as a chair, she would not be able to help me because the systems are so well fixed. I think that's the conversation we should have. And when I was submitting on the floor of the house, I said, let us shift the focus from personalities. Because you know you can fix the system so well, and it is devoid of, the, of, the, of human interference. So that uh, Sifuna here and myself, we are able to go to that system and satisfy ourselves that there is no way that I will lose an election here and make a complaint. Okay. That is my, my belief. And I think if we can have that intellectual uh, 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 argument now and within the space of time between now and the five years to come, 
uh, for the next general election. Yeah. I will be so happy to engage in that. But for me, that all oh, public service, oh, we should have nominated uh, you know people from my party or yeah. the other party. For me, I think we are losing the focus there because even if let's say uh, uh, Sifuna was in my party and I nominated him and he's sitting there. What prevents uh, William Kisang there from buying Sifuna when he's there and doing his bidding? Yeah. You get, because once they are the, there, the yeah, what, once they are there, they become independent okay. and they can be manipulated. Okay. So making, making a political issue out of nothing for me <laughs> is really, is really <laughs> bad. Yeah. It's in bad taste. And you know, this is what I, I pray in this politics we are going to move away from. Okay. Let's fix the issue. Me, me I want Sifuna to come and tell me, look, you guys, Bana, you are thieves. You fix this system. You've done this procurement in a way that you are favoring yourselves to win. And then I'll tell him, no, 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 we'll show it out. And then we talk about that. You know, we talk about the system. Okay. And then even if Sifuna says, I want my brother to be the chairman, I have no problem. Just be the chairman. I would have no problem whatsoever because I know he wouldn't favor him. Even if we ran for arrest in uh, in Nairobi, the systems are such that they are they are, they are, they are at least we have the faith in them. Yeah. And for me, that is where the debate should be, okay. not uh, personalities. Because the moment we bring personalities, it becomes ugly. It becomes an intellectual. It becomes personal. Yeah. It becomes oh, this is that, 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 that. And I think we should move the debate to a higher level, especially at the. Okay. Because that's where reasonable people stay. All right, Sifuna. Yeah, so, so two things. I think uh, Senator Mungatana is one of the more reasonable people on the, on the Kenya Kwanzaa side. And I appreciate yeah. that, uh, Senator. Yeah. But you must also allow me to fight with the tools that are available for me. <laughs> you, cannot, you cannot invite me to a battle, then you want to define which weapons I should come with. Okay. And yet, uh, those, if the stones are what are available for me, uh, yes. that is exactly what I will come with. Yes. Number two, we have seen Quora Michi in the Senate before last session, uh, like the entire majority side and many of our people who on the minority side traveled to Juba for the Yala Games. Yes. Uh, and I was seated in that chamber ready to debate these serious issues that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But all my colleagues had gone to Juba. So it is not something that is out of the ordinary. Third thing, uh, Trevor, on the question of whether really we can be injuncted during the processes of parliament, this is a well-settled uh, uh, principle. First of all, there is a rule on subjudice. When the courts are dealing with a matter, we as parliamentarians are not allowed to debate that matter. Yes. Under the Parliamentary Powers and Privileges Act, it is the same thing that when parliament is seized of a matter, a court cannot entertain that matter. Yes. So the question is, when uh, Senator Dulo was going to court, this matter was still with parliament. And the most cynical thing is that the decision was made on a Wednesday by the minority side. The letter was served on the speaker, uh, or the decision was communicated to the speaker during a Senate business committee. On Thursday, he doesn't communicate. And you know, once the sitting is uh, done on Thursday, we have to wait until Tuesday. He has all that time. Then on Tuesday, he tells us that he fell sick. Then on Wednesday, somehow, miraculously, he became well enough to travel to Cyprus. And then, uh, on, on, when the day he, he travels, the deputy speaker comes and says, just at 1.30, one hour before uh, the session commences, there is now this court order from the PPDT. I want people to understand that when there is an injustice like this, and we have exhausted our legal arguments, our intellectual capacity is exhausted. Senator Mungatana, what have I not said on the floor of the House to demonstrate this point? Mm. Even with your support. Now, when my intellectual capacity fails, because that is my first go-to, I have applied my knowledge, my skills, my learning, my civility mm. to try and convince people properly. When all that, all that fails, what am I supposed to do? I will revo revert to my more primal instincts, which is to <laughs> use more base means ah. to achieve my, uh, my goal. Go to the you are refusing to listen to me. Go Number to two, uh, lastly, Trevor, on the question of... Uh, uh, of the IEBC, I want Kenyans to know that we as the minority side, we as the people who are in Azimio, we are the people who supported Raila Odinga and voted for him. We have had no role in the constitution of this panel. And I was telling you yesterday there were very interesting statistics that were put out by the Standard newspaper. I wish I had it here yesterday. That in fact, Raila won, even if we were to use these contested results, 27 out of the 47 counties representing 63% of the population of Kenya. 
And then you want to tell us that we have no role in the constitution of a body that is the most important body in terms of our exercise of our sovereignty. The question of the IEBC, it's a question of perception that then leads to confidence. Senator Mungatana, one of the reasons why the elections of 2002 is widely celebrated as the most democratic is because of the process in the lead up to the constitution of the commission. The IPPG process that started around 97 is what pe gave people the perception of fairness that it then builds into confidence that the people who are there are people who are neutral. So if you look at the current panel, Trevor, there are supposed to be two representatives of the Parliamentary Service Commission. We tried to argue on the floor of the Senate without success that in fact we should define it to mean yeah. one person from the minority side and another person from the majority side. I want to tell Kenyans that those two people representing the PSC in the panel currently were selected from the majority side because we never submitted a name. Yeah. When we go to the two religious uh, people of the religious council, we even argued on the floor of the Senate that this monster called a religious, the religious council does not exist in law. Who are these people? Are they uh, Bishop uh, Madame Rigathi and, uh, and uh, the, 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 the president's wife? Because we are, they are the ones we see leading prayers. Who is this religious council? They have submitted two names. We have had no input as 63% of the population on who those two people are. Yeah. Then we go to the PPLC. They have appointed, because we as the as Emiro political parties in the PPLC said we will not participate in this charade. So who, who have they uh, forwarded? They have forwarded the chairman of this party called uh, Progressive Party of Kenya, which is in Kenya Kwanzaa, somebody who ran in, uh, I think, Kitutu Masaba, mm -hmm. uh, and came third, mm -hmm. and is an avowed William Ruto supporter. So already those are five people that are at the beck and call of the president. The PSC, the Public Service Commission, in our view, and we also made these arguments on the floor of the Senate. I am repeating this floor of the Senate thing so that I am not accused of not, <laughs> of not arguing where it matters. Yeah. And to demonstrate that I can argue there, and if I fail, I can argue here, and if I fail here, I can go to Jivanji, because that is what the Constitution yeah. allows me to do. Okay. This PSC, we argued, is an extension of the executive, yeah. and for good reason. They have uh, forwarded uh, uh, Madam Kisotu, who is the vice chair of the PSC. Lastly, the LSK, they have forwarded. I made a plea to the LSK because I'm a member of the LSK. Mm. Yes. Mm. And I said, please, as a respectable society, do not participate in this charade. Somehow the president of the Law Society of Kenya ignored my pleas, and they have forwarded the name of a person who is a non Tangatanga -tanga supporter. So I can tell Kenyans here. No -tanga -tanga. <laughs> Kenya Kwanzaa. What do you call yourself these days? I know you as Tanga Tanga. <laughs> no -tanga -tanga. So the, out of these seven <laughs> people, out of these seven people, Trevor, yeah. I can demonstrate to the country that all these people are people who are going to do the bidding of William Ruto. Now, that is where the problem begins. Will Kenyans have confidence in that process? I can tell you, no. We have said that this now, this now represents one half of the country. Senator, this is the Kenya Kwanzaa Brigade on this panel. We are going to bring the people who represent the other half. This is direct sovereign power. Because as a senator, I was unable to convince you on the floor. The, Let the people the come, people? The, the, the public, no. the public will come to the meeting of you this see, panel to help in selecting the IBC. Because <laughs> me, as the elected representative, even with all my brains, my articulation, yeah. I have failed but to you convince these people you, that you, we are a stakeholder in elections. So are you, are you going to disrupt the meetings? That's not a disruption. Why, why is it that every time the opposition proposes to take an action, there is always a direct connection to disruption? Just the other day, Senator Mungatana, yes. there was a protest in, in Nairobi mm -hmm. of traders from Nyamakima uh, against this issue of uh, China Square. Mm -hmm. Nobody said anything about them. Okay. It was Mandamano. It was actually Mandamano. It was peaceful. Yes, it was peaceful Mandamano. So what we are saying is we also have that right. We will come to that meeting peacefully. I will mobilize one million Nairobians to come to this, the ones who elected me, to come to this meeting because their senator was unable to instill sense yeah. that we also are stakeholders in elections. But Senator Sifuna, isn't this what Ungatana is saying? That even in the just disbanded IBC, you had a role in it. The elections didn't go your way. So it's about the systems, not about the people. That's what Ungatana is trying to argue. We, you see, we don't constitute an election panel fairly so that the election goes my way. And that's the point Mungatana was saying. 
we are saying that this is a confidence game and that the perception of involvement of all stakeholders is critical for that, to achieve that confidence. It is not about me winning. I would like to lose an election and lose fairly. You understand? Even Mungatana here wants to know that he has a fair chance. You know, there's a lot of can pretense. I say, can I say something? Everybody knows what is going on. If it was me as SG of ODM, and I forwarded seven names of my chairman of ODM, the chairman of ODM in Tanariva, I put him here on the panel. I put the chairman of Kiambu, I put the chairman of Nairobi, and then all of them, the seven, can, you can see a direct link to ODM. Mungatana would not be sitting pretty. And he knows it. So why is, so, why is it so difficult to acknowledge this? Okay. We are saying let there be the perception of fairness, and then that is what will build confidence in the IBC. All right, Kisang. I wanted to say something. You know, uh, Trevor, is, uh, if you remember the elections of 2022, the 9th of August, uh, Asmio was in government then. That's not true. With Jubilee. Because if you remember even what Senator Oburu said then, is that there is no way they are going to lose elections this time because they are the president, they are the system, and they have a deep state. So, but Kenya Kwanza won because IEPC was independent. Was independent. They did the elections. The system was fully automated. Results were sent from every polling station to that national tiling center. And it was very difficult to, uh, to manipulate. That is why those who went there at night to try to do something, it became very difficult because Chebukat put his foot down and said no, and his other two colleagues. I, I was not coming there. Trevor is uh, my colleague, uh, Zeneta Sifuna, uh, has been in the House uh, longer than me from uh, September last year <laughs> in the Senate, <laughs> but I've been in Parliament longer than him. I expect that uh, the minority side, after we passed the IBC Amendment Act 2022, to lobby in Parliamentary Service Commission to ensure they get one. Because the House leadership, there is minority side and majority. They should have lobbied to get one of the two uh, banalists from Parliamentary Service Commission. Secondly, PBLC, they had a say here. They would have gotten an opportunity to get a slot. Law Society of Kenya. Majority of those people in the law society of Kenya are actually from the other side, from Asimio. I think how, do, how do you know I that? I know, majority. <laughs> so you would have gotten at least the three PPLC, one from Parliamentary Service Commission, one from LSK, and then now Public Service Commission, where you are saying it's an extension of the executive, this is just an expert coming to plan and ensure a profe the, the guys who are going to be appointed are professionals who are independent, who are honest, they have integrity. And uh, these panelists, uh, <laughs> Trevor, they are not the IBC commissioners. This is a panel to, to interview. Yes. Mm. And the interview will be live. Mm. And that is the place, man, maybe you can now bring the one million. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that is where we are bringing the one million uh, one Kenya. Million to, the to watch and see uh, those who are being interviewed, are they the right people? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and then uh, when elections are called 2027, you know, already Sifuna and his team are preparing to reject 2027 elections. <laughs> I mean, this is basically uh, where we are seeing. <laughs> and you know, the rejection of the election is not the MCA elections, Senate elections, governor elections, or women elections. It is the presidential elections. Because if IABC was not independent, how come? He, he, he accepted to, be, to have been elected. Okay. Mugatana? You know, uh, I, 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 mean, I love this, uh, by the way, these arguments. I, I love them. They, 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 they seem to really, uh, you know, stir my intellectual thinking. But I, I'm looking at uh, this panel, and they are seated there. I'm picking it up from where Senator uh, Kisang has left it. <laughs> now, they have a process. You know, the process is... You are going to be uh, commissioners. So you score this on academic uh, performance. You score this maybe on public service. You score this maybe on uh, your, 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 your personality, whatever, whatever you score this. So that at the end, we have maybe 10, 20 people who are being interviewed live on television. Then you come up with the, the, the real commissioners. So for me, 
for me, I would have been, in, if I was in opposition, that is, I would have been insisting on this process. What is the criteria? How is the scoring being done? And can we have a, a, a confirmation that this scoring is, is live? We want to see the, the scoring of the panelists displayed there at, at the, at, at, at the, at the live, TV, live. At live. live. <laughs> so that when you finish, you know, like a boxing match, you know, a boxing match, there's no, you, you are told this, this judge has this said this is this points, this judge has said this points, so someone can win on points. If I was the one, I would intellectually interrogate that system so that even if we all put sisters who are from my father's house, they will have, if they brought useless people there, who reject them. And we will insist that they have to score this minimum score for them to be IEBC commissioners. For me, uh, president is sitting in state house, and that thing is life. President is a political animal. He can see how it is going, that maybe this guy, this guy, I, probably I don't like him, but he's the one who is really scoring. That must be the commissioner. And that is how it is going to be. I don't see this accusation that the president is going to remote control these people. I think it is unfair and unfounded. I also wanted to say this with a lot of respect to the opposition. Why is it, uh, for Christ's sake, why is it that you demand to participate and when the opportunity comes, you say, oh, we are not going to participate. You know, and this, this is a culture that is coming up on, on this other side. You remember uh, when the election, uh, we were on the other side, when the election of Uru Kenyatta was nullified by the Supreme Court. You know, these people went with all those nice arguments and uh, the court made a very good decision celebrated across the entire continent and the world, and it created precedents uh, even in, in other parts of the South and part of Africa, where the courts now can reject a presidential election, you know, and still, see, you know, and we were celebrated. And we said, okay, now let's have a repeat. Oh, no, we, we don't want to, we don't want to repeat the election. You know, we can't have this. And even in this one, the same culture has come in now. They are told, nominate. No, 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 no. Uh, my, my learned friend and colleague in the Senate, uh, Senator Sefuna, is saying, we as whatever, we as, as Mio have not participated. And he's saying it proudly. What is this? It's, it's a culture of absenteeism from leadership, <laughs> refusing to take up your responsibility. And I'm telling you, Sefuna, God is watching you as you are misleading your people. Because it is wrong. As it goes to Jibani. He's watching you. You are supposed to be, to be doing something about the position you, are you have taken you're supposed to, they gave you that position for you to be able to talk for them, to be in those offices, to negotiate, to do whatever you're You are absconding. And then you are saying, no, you will not participate. You come back to you. Come back to me for what? Can I go back to my children and ask them, how do we pay rent? Or how do we pay school fees? Or how do we pay for the fuel of the car? Or how do we pay insurance? I can't go back to my children. The children have, by nature, elected me. Even my wife sometimes will look at you when, you, when things are very bad. They look at you and they turn into opposition. You know how it is, every one of us who is married. You know how it is. They turn into opposition. So you can't go back to them and say, oh, I'm going, I'm going to bring one million people. What is that? That is irresponsible leadership. It is like saying, I'm incapable of doing this thing. Let's have another senator from Nairobi, from, uh, from, from, your, from your team, to come and, and you know, lead the people. Okay. And I want to say something, uh, finally, about statistics. Yeah. Statistics that my learned friend is banding here at 63% were supporting Raila. Surely, surely, can we use, you know, interpretation of a person who writes in the headlines of a, 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 a newspaper to be the basis of which we can argue? Even he knows, and I've said it many times, that that cannot be a basis for evidence in court, for evidence in the Senate, or any serious place. Because those are opinions, opinions of a person. Statistics can be, uh, you know, interpreted in any way. So I'm urging my friend,
just take up the leadership role you people have been given. And in this time, in this space of Kenya now, you've been given an opposition leadership. Come and engage. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Come and engage. Don't run back to the people who told you, go and represent us. Mm. You know, don't run back and say, we have been defeated. Then what do they do? You know, that is, that's not right. right. I am urging my colleagues, yeah. and, and in particular, you know, there is a problem here. They, they, they are still under very old kind of, uh, you know, leadership and thinking that is encompassing that leadership. That what we do now, let's do what we did 20 years ago, mass action, you know, let's do this, let's, you know, and yet there are brilliant people like Sifuna, brilliant people who have gone to school, who have papers, who uh, have been elected by the people, who can engage who should now be, you know, be eased up into leadership so that they can engage us with, in the new era of politics. Not the same things we were doing 20 years ago. Okay. So my plea is that, Sifuna, please, can you call for ODM elections and run for party leader, please? Okay, Sifuna. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think you're going to succeed in inciting me. <laughs> <laughs> I can see what you're trying to do. Uh, whatever it is you call my brilliance, whatever it is, it does not not oust yeah. the rights that are secured under Article 37. Mm -hmm. This constitution is only 10 years old. Mm -hmm. We gave ourselves this right to mass action, to protest, <laughs> to uh, uh, assemble and all the others under Article 37. These are not 1973 rights. These are rights from 2010, barely 13 years ago. So you cannot say these are old tactics. Number two, Picketing uh, they is say mass it action. is here. No, thing is not no, you mass see, action. You see the, the, the but anyway, yeah, just senior, continue. Senior. Okay, okay, okay. The, but just the, also, this constitution tells us who has the duty to interpret it. It doesn't say Danson Mungatari. <laughs> it says, the, it says the High Court, yes. Says the court. And I happen to, as in my position as SG, <laughs> I know that the courts have already interpreted the bounds of the rights under Article 37 because we are the ones who litigated that matter. So I know what I am talking about. Mm -hmm. Number two, they say that numbers don't lie, mm -hmm. uh, Senator Mungatana. These statistics that you are dismissing is simple arithmetic. Mm -hmm. If somebody won 27 out of 47 counties, it is a question of fact. You can extract the population of that, uh, those 27 uh, counties, as the, the writer yesterday did, and tell you what is the population of those 27 counties. You know, it, 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 these are not numbers that we have thrown about. Number three, live interviews do not produce geniuses, including this one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Foolishness can also ensue mm -hmm. from live interviews. Mm -hmm. We have seen live interviews in the uh, vetting of CSs. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not CSs, cabinet, cabinet secretaries. Secretary, CS. And you will agree with me that in your own words, the, some useless people resulted from that particular process. Mm. That process being live does not mean that it is now going to result in the, uh, the, 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 the outcome kind of that should be ideal. I can open. tell you that for a fact. So even if you do these interviews live on TV, we have seen it with cabinet secretaries, we have seen it with judges. There are judges who went through the JSC process um, that was live on TV, mm. and they have run into issues uh, after that. When we talk about participation, again, as a learned colleague, you know that courts have even defined what participation means. Yeah, right. Participation must be effective. It cannot be cosmetic. Mm -hmm. So if you are inviting me to participate in a process for cosmetic purposes, I have a right to tell you that that is not effective participation, mm -hmm. and I will have nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. now, uh, again, this person that you are saying they represent the PSC and you, you are calling them an expert, when the panel is constituted, all those people become panelists. There is no one there who's an advisor to the other panelists to guide them on CG what and what. No, all of them are panelists who will all score all the candidates who come before them. So that the constitution of that panel, the people who sit on that panel, are critical because they all contribute to the scoring of everyone who will appear uh, before that particular uh, panel. So. When we say we want effective participation in this thing, and I've, I've referred you to Article 1. Again, I'm not the draft of this constitution. Mm. I was in a university when people were at BOMAS. I was, uh, I think, first year or second year student. Mm. When I, I suspect you were there. I was very much there. Yes. So how is it that I'm the one who's, who's, <laughs> was, who wants to tell you where these things are in this pilot. document? <laughs> yeah. So Article 1, you people wrote. Yeah, I was a student. I'm now just reading what you people were writing. Mm. 
that this sovereign power can be exercised directly okay. or through me as an elected representative. Mm. I have demonstrated on this show that I have done all within my power as an elected senator of Nairobi to bring sense into this issue. Mm. I have a right. And you see, the good thing is that uh, you yourself have spoken about live proceedings. Mm. The Senate proceedings are also live. Mm. The people of Nairobi can see that Sifuna is putting up a fight on the Senate floor. They can see that people are refusing to see the sense that their senator is trying to show them. And they can see that I am outnumbered because the reasonable people are fewer than the unreasonable people. Unfortunately, no unfortunately, <laughs> we all get to vote no, and no, the unreasonable no, people no, are winning. No, no, no. So the public can see this. And then, so, that, so that when I go back to them, when I go back to them, you know, even as a father, as you have said, your son sees you leaving the house, you have gone to hustle, you have come back without any food. Maybe he has, he's a better hustler than you. No. He can live and go to a few places, <laughs> but he can see that you tried. So what will these people do now? Sif? This is what, uh, the, I'm coming to this. Uh, Senator Mungatana has invited us, in fact, to bring these one people, one million people, and he has told us that the most critical thing is the criteria, and we need to see the scoring. That is why we, were, we will be there. That is what this one million people will be doing. <laughs> they will be looking at the criteria because these one million people are panelists. Mm. They are panelists because these seven are representing Kenya Kwanzaa, one half of the country. So these one million, so that we have a balance. Why don't you? They are representing. Seven. Eh? Why don't you bring seven? Then? No, you, you see, you, you cannot. You cannot. You, you cannot. Ah, because you for me, people, for, <laughs> you people, for me, no. for me, you have chosen your process. How you arrived at seven? So you choose. Because let, let me tell you, <laughs> the million. Just a minute. Just a minute, Trevor. Let me make this point. Okay. With all your powers and your numbers, mm. you people agreed on seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you wanted Mungatana, yes. you would have said nine, and you would have passed it because you have the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Because it is within your power. Mm -hmm. Now, it is now within my power. To do one million. To, yes, please, don't interfere in that process. <laughs> so what these people will come, they will be looking at that criteria. Yeah. You score this person, we also score that person. What we are hoping, <coughs> Mungatana, is that we can bring sense to prevail, mm -hmm. that we can have a bipartisan effort mm -hmm. for us to be able to arrive at a, a a, not, not a commission that will be Sifuna's commission, mm. but a commission that will have the perceptive perception of a fair and balanced commission mm. that will then have the confidence right. of, the, of the public. Okay. Now, lastly, yes. uh, you know he has thrown around a lot of uh, accusations. Mm. Uh, uh, the, he's saying, oh, we are you led ability to think and to envision a country yeah. where there is fairness, a country where everybody feels mm. meant. That right? It's not that I don't have views, mm. but it is not in my place to comment. Okay. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's just see what the people are saying. There's quite a lot of feedback. Then we come and take closing remarks really quick from my panelists here because we're running out of time and you we haven't had much from the senators in terms of the uh, LGBTQ conversation that has been live everywhere. We'd like to hear your views on that as we close on this. Engineer Lazaro says, Kenya Kwanza now more than five months old in office in the song, still blame games and serious purge on former regime officials. When will you address the emotive issues of youth, joblessness, rising cost of living? Jobless. Okay. Magua says, Kenya Kwanza has no plans to reduce the cost of living at all. Every time they are asked about it, they remind us how they inherited a dilapidated economy or how Handshake ruined the economy. The narrative now is they are still operating on Uhuru's budget. Okay? Mm. Kenya Minde says, when will this excuse by Kenya Kwanza that they have only been in power for six months end? Six months is already 10% of their five-year term, and they have nothing at all to write home about. Mm. Anyway, they promised to do these things in 100 days. Okay? Mm. And he still continues to say, I'm pondering over how Kenya Kwanzaa government is playing mind games on Kenyans. There's money to appoint the CASs, money to double the budget of office of the president and other development, but when it comes to lowering the cost of UNGA, that's where a handshake comes in. <laughs> Conrad says, Kenyans suffer. We are in a state where getting one meal is a problem. The government is gambling with its citizens, okay? Remy Butia says, electricity prices in Kenya have historically been influenced by both demand and the supply side of shock. Costly electricity causes inflationary pressure, weakening consumer purchasing power. Agumba Steve says, it's funny hearing some legislators deny the fact that our country is headed in the wrong direction, despite the research findings. Independence of mind by legislators counts a lot in matters of economy. Too much psychophancy is costing our development. <laughs> 
Godiba Raza says both houses of parliament should take their role seriously by ensuring that all legislation that touch on the well-being of Kenyans are drafted and timely enacted. The current push and pull with lots of sideshows won't help the nation. Dixon says, where's the money which has been <coughs> saved from the stopped subsidy 20 billion times six months? Is it not going to be used to pay CASs? Mm. Okay. Reverend Harry says both Senate and National Assembly, <laughs> respective <laughs> of political affiliation, so should speak in one voice and legislate laws that will govern the power, the power supply, review budget policies, and avoid chest thumping. God bless. Santi Sana, Reverend. Emmanuel says Mungatana has spoken well. The problem of IABC is the servers and result manipulation at the polling station. That's what should be fixed. Check on the powers of the Secretariat. The commissioners always appear so helpless in Supreme Court. Flavian says, as Emil had the opportunity to submit the names to the IBC selection panel, they opted not to. They intentionally waived their right, and they can't cry foul now. The country can't be held at ransom by Azimio. Sawe says, our leaders have shown a lack of concern for the difficulties faced by Kenyans. They've achieved their goals of getting elected. They seem to have forgotten about us and are already making new pledges for the next election cycle. <laughs> All right. Honorable Kisang, let's start with closing remarks. And I'd like to hear your thoughts on this issue about LGBTQ. Did the Supreme Court R? Good. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Trevor. Number one is uh, the cost of living and employment is a serious issue, and we've discussed on how to reduce the cost of living, especially uh, as our Committee of Energy. We will do something, and we believe something will happen before end of this year. Yeah. Uh, so that at least, you know, these factories can expand, can uh, do more employment, uh, can employ more of our youth. Uh, we have, uh, our industries actually have gone down. And uh, when I went to Ethiopia sometimes back, you know, there is a lot of uh, employment being generated by what they call agro-industrial parks across the regions in that country. And I believe uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa government is uh, already, they have uh, proposed to allocate uh, 100 million in each of our counties to start doing something small in the direction of generating employment. Yeah. Like uh, yesterday, the CS uh, mining was in my county because we have a plus one mining company that uh, closed down yeah. and reduced to employ over 3,000 uh, youth. Okay. I believe in the next few months uh, it is going to be reopened yeah. so that at least we generate employment for the youth across the country. Okay. On this, uh, the, the Supreme Court, LGBT, I'm a Catholic, I'm a Christian. If you read Genesis chapter 2, you read Leviticus uh, chapter 18, you know, basically, you know, even in our own culture as Africans, God saw it fit that, you know, man cannot stay on his own. He needs a, a, a helper. And that helper is not another man. Because if it, uh, if it was another man, God would not have uh, created a woman. So I think the God overstepped the mandate. Theirs is to interpret the law, not to make the law. Okay. So. This thing is actually serious. I believe it will be one of the discussions. And I invite my colleague to come to Senate today <laughs> <laughs> so that we can articulate these issues instead of articulating only in this show, All right. so that we can tell the courts they overstepped the mandate. Yeah. Uh, three Supreme uh, High Court uh, charges they say that uh, you know people have a free uh, uh, as free association. You know, association and marriage are different. Yeah. They're not the same. Okay. Marriage is intimate. Yeah. You need to, you know I mean, this, that results into procreation okay. to increase the numbers. God said, go and fill the world. Okay. I agree with uh, what Museveni said that uh, <laughs> the two of them who decide that they wanted to get married, that they be put in. Until one of them gives, gives birth, then they can be released from that uh, jail. Okay. It's even a closing remark. Well, first, <laughs> you, can tell, you can tell that my colleague has not read the judgment of the Supreme <laughs> Court. Right. And I've told you even these live shows can expose ignorance. <laughs> because the court has not said, and it did not say that these people have a right to marry. The right to association, and you can read here, right to form an association. under 30, 36, yes. it says every person has this the right. Just a minute. Association. Let me I read know. it. I've read it. No, you, don't, you have not read it. Let yes. me read it for you. <laughs> every person has the right to freedom of association, which includes the right to form, join, or participate in the activities of an association of any kind. Yeah. That's now, for me, Trevor, 
this discussion is a total distraction. We want to move the focus of the nation from the kitchen where people are unable to feed their families. We want to move the discussion to the bedroom. It is absolutely ridiculous. But I understand the people who need that distraction because these other conversations about cost of uh, living, cost of energy are very difficult uh, conversations to have. Number two, it has exposed very serious hypocrisy. When we were protesting the decision of the Supreme Court, they were telling us that this is the highest court in the land, the matter is over. Now people are discussing, oh, we, can, we are going to appeal, should we review? You cannot appeal the decision of the Supreme Court, it is the highest court in the land. Another one was saying on the floor of the House yesterday in the, in the National Assembly that they are going to bring a censure motion against the Supreme Court. When we say the very same thing about the result of the presidential election, these people tell us to shut up, including the church. Number three, the hypocrisy. When you hear my brother here quoting Bible verses and uh, African culture, and he comes from Marraquet, <laughs> he will have a very serious difficulty discussing African culture in the context of the Marraquet. Because there are very serious problems, including early marriage of children, uh, FGM, which are very uncomfortable subjects for him. He quotes Leviticus. There is a, a Senator uh, Gloria Oroba who has brought a motion on period shaming. In fact, if Gloria wants to solve the, the problem of uh, uh, period shaming, he should go back to the origin. Where did it start? It started in the book of Leviticus. The book of Leviticus is, is basically period shaming, that a woman during that period of the month cannot even attend ch uh, church or go to holy places, and if she does, she should be stoned to death. That's the Leviticus he wants to quote for us here. <laughs> so I'm telling you, uh, uh, Trevor, this debate has to ha be had by people who are sober. Many of these members of parliament, they're just making noise here. We have seen even in the US, People in Congress who are the loudest opponents of uh, uh, same-sex marriages were caught later in scandals and revealed to be closet, uh, closeted homosexuals. Some of these people are raising homosexual children. They don't even know it because they don't want to have a conversation. I agree that as a traditional African society, things take time for us to be able to appreciate them. Probably the problem with uh, the gay movement, at least in Kenya, is that they want things to happen now and happen immediately. You see, there was a time in 2008, the first time when uh, President Obama was, uh, was elected. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He himself was against gay marriage. And I remember one of his first interviews, yeah. he was asked and he said his views were evolving. Societies take time to appreciate some of these things. It is the same debate with marijuana. It is the same debate with uh, uh, homosexuals. What we need to do so, yeah. is to remove the hypocrisy yeah, from this particular debate and have a sober debate about the issues around this matter. All right, Mungatana, closing agreeing. Oh, My closing remarks are that um, I am very hopeful about our country. I'm hopeful that after we swallow the pill, the chloroquine, after we take the injection, we are going to be better. <laughs> the country is going to improve. The economy is going to improve. Okay. I am positive that with the steps that are being taken in various sectors, that in the trade, in agriculture, in the, in the industry, inviting people to come over. We, we were with the president in, in Mombasa the other day yeah. when we were opening the first gas plant. And it's going to offer employment to over 6,000 people. And this is an investor from uh, Tanzania. And uh, we have broken down the at least 23 non-tariff barriers yeah, yeah. Uh, between ourselves and Tanzania. So they are coming. Okay. And Kenyans are going there. So I'm very hopeful yeah. that with the effort and the engagement and the determination that we have in this uh, 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 administration, okay. things are going to move uh, forward. All right. I have seen Moses Kuria moving all over, looking for opportunities yeah. for, for, for Kenya to expand. And we also at the at the Continental Parliament, I, I heard the the, the Pan African Parliament. Yeah. We are pushing Kenya's position there. Okay. The future for me, 
after we've swallowed the pill, yeah. is going to be to be much better. Yeah. Briefly on LGBTQ. On this, uh, on, good, on, right on, on that debate, for me, I I think that uh, it is obvious. It's not the way the natural things should happen. Okay. And, uh, you know, it, it, it is actually, for, for, as a Pokomo elder, I feel very embarrassed to talk about stuff like that. Okay. I think that they, they should be discussed at a different level. Okay. And for me, uh, I, I'm un uncomfortable because I, I feel that uh, we, we are... Uh, maybe it's my age, maybe it's what, but I think <laughs> it's wrong even to talk about things that you, you do uh, uh, back home with your wife or whatever. Yeah. It's <laughs> just wrong. Okay. And we should be talking about, I mean, like Sifuna says, let us focus the economy okay. on the economy because this is where the, the foot is feeling the pinch. All right. Uh, yeah. and, and I'm not with those people who are, are moving us away from the, the real issues that are right. affecting us. All right. Gentlemen, thank you so much for making thank time you. for us. Edwin Sifuna, Senator Nairobi, Dutton, Mugatana, Senator Tanarim, and William Kisang, Senator Elgeo Marakwet. That has been State of the Nation, and thank you for all the feedback, all right? Bye for nice time for cooking tips. <laughs>